This really wasn't a, a planned necessarily episode. This is a trip we took uh, up to our cabin. Uh, it's our grouse camp in the fall. It's our sugar shack in the spring. This time of year, we're doing maple syrup up there. Uh, it's a fishing camp in the summer. It's a uh, it does everything for us. And I think the important part of this is understanding that the behaviors that we establish in certain spots need to transfer. Uh, they need to go everywhere we go. So place training is one of them. Place training is where we spent a lot of focus early on with this dog. Again, she's been with us here for a little less than three weeks. I think the value in this, it's not like we've only worked on this four or five times prior to this. We've worked on it pretty consistently leading up to, the, um, to, to each one of these episodes but I wanted to show the progression with it. So as we started out with no distractions in a really controlled area, as the dog learned and understood the behavior that was expected, started getting good at it, we started adding some outside distractions. Lillian is really good at that. I, I wanna show the progression of it. So we move the locations, that's a, that's a challenge in its own place. Replicating behaviors in new spots can be challenging to dogs. So up at the cabin, that adds a distraction right there. It's a new spot, new environment. Uh, Lillian with that tape measure, that's a distraction. And you'll notice as this goes on, the more she snaps that tape, the more comfortable the dog gets and kind of settles in. It actually gets to the point where the dog kind of ignores that. Um, thing that Lillian's doing that's acting as a distraction. There's a lot of learning going on here. Some of it is the dog, some of it is my daughter. And so part of it is me teaching her stuff, part of, it, part of it is me teaching her stuff about teaching a dog stuff. They're not good, so they're so dead. Did they get in the way? They're good. Oh my goodness. Look at it. Oh. Are you gonna be okay? Can I get my own? You got some Cheetos on your face, I think. Can I get my own, Dad? Oh boy. It's a pretty big toe. I don't think that this is different than a lot of things in life where there's a lot of opportunities out there to gain ground as far as your training progress. And they don't always have to be very formal, structured situations. Uh, a lot of it can happen by incorporating opportunities to learn into just everyday situations and this is a perfect example of that. Okay, stay back from Makina, you can't get too close. See that? Oh, I saw it. <coughs> Watch over here. I am. get a little bit of stuff in here that has to do with parenting, body language, tone. You're going to see things that um, there's going to be an example here coming up where I have to firm up with Lillian uh, behavior wise. She has to understand that she has to be gentle we with the puppy. We are going to do some We are going to do this. Place our gymnastics, and I'm going to sit here by you. Let her be. Mm -hmm. Lillian, let her be. And She's you fine. You are going to do gymnastics. She's fine. With me. Okay, okay. Hey, what did we talk about? What did we talk about? Huh? What did we talk about? Lillian, what did we say? Gentle, right?
Isn't that what we talked about? Huh? We're going to be gentle. Is that right? Are you listening? Lillian, look at me. Gentle, right? And you can tell by how I deliver it to them, both with body language, with tone, with verbal. We talk a lot more to our kids than we do to the dog yes, because Dad. the verbal part means more. Right? That's much better. Gentle. Be gentle. You be gentle too. Okay, back up from her. No, ma'am. You back up so she can't get at you. Good job. Gentle. Okay, leave her alone so she doesn't nip. Lillian, hands back. Some of these issues with the little puppy wanting to nip at her clothes and lick on her, and Good. some of that is some um, testing. Some of it is because she has Cheetos on her fingers and on her mouth, and the dog likes that. So it's part of the learning here is for the dog to understand that uh, yeah, and, and set the dog up for success to not allow it to fail. And part of that is just mechanical. It's physical. Back up. Get where the dog can't get at your clothes. Get where the dog yeah. can't get at your hands. And that fixes the problem. Back up a little bit so she can't get at you. I know. She, it's hard on her when you get so close. Just stay back a little bit. Physically lowering yourself down to that puppy's level is body language. And that's exactly when the dog responds in a, poorly. It, it, she tests when Lillian gets down at her level and gets into her area. Is the dog saying, I'll take the challenge. And we don't want that. So the f simple fix is back her up, stand her up. Don't let her interact with the puppy that way and turn it into a, a, a test of, or a good. battle of wills there. It's a very simple session here. It's a very simple lesson. It's a very realistic thing where we took an opportunity to train not taking any extra time, and I just peeled my phone out and decided to record it. There's several times in here where Makina goes to the edge of the bed, stands really steady, really staunch. Um, something that we're going to ask her to do more formally as things move on, but we're going to have to put together uh, a plan to have the dog understand that those are the behaviors that we want at times and for them to do it on cue. We're getting better, and within two weeks of this, look how much better this dog has gotten. It's not only happened three or four times in that period, we're doing it daily. We're doing it with lots of repetition and it's slowly getting better and the better it gets the longer we can go and the longer we can go the more often we can do it it's a pr it's a long long road ahead of us um, but if we chip away at it a little bit at a time it becomes a much more enjoyable road tell her she's a good girl good girl you're a good girl oh